So in 1887, uh, there was the famous Michelson-Morley experiment. And this was set up because at the time everybody thought that there is such a thing as an ether. And this was made to actually test that hypothesis and determine if it was accurate. And they actually got uh, a false outcome. So this experiment did not prove what they wanted it to prove. But nonetheless, it has uh, a lot of interesting concepts and it's a very interesting idea. So in its essence, here is a diagram of what they set up. So they had a light source that shot out a light beam, and then it impacted a uh, mirror, and that mirror split the light beam, so half of it traveled up to mirror one and bounced back down and went to the receiver. And the other half continued straight through, hit mirror two, went back to the mirror and back to the receiver. So in essence, it's just a race between two different light beams and if they both come back at the same time, you'll get uh, a very telltale interference pattern, which they can detect. But if they come back at a slightly different time, then that'll change the interference pattern. And so what they did is uh, essentially ether theory said that the Earth was moving through space with a velocity and that the speed of light they thought um, wasn't uh, continual everywhere. So the speed of light, if this experiments, which they set up to uh, determine uh, if this was the case, so they thought that the speed of light should change, but that wasn't true. So in the downwind case, so the Earth is moving this direction uh, with respect to the experiment, then what they thought was the uh, Galilean view where you'd get the velocity of Earth plus the, uh, the, the speed of light and the ether and then those two would add creating a much larger vector and going the other way so if the, the velocity of Earth was going this way but the speed of or the light was coming the opposite direction then the two would cancel out creating a much smaller vector so this is in the upwind direction. And so perpendicular now, so we're just working in the, the x-plane, but perpendicular uh, in the y-plane, what would happen is you'd have the velocity of Earth going to the right, and then uh, light coming up at this angle, theta here, it doesn't matter, just some arbitrary angle. And then that distance, um, or sorry, the, uh, the adjacent side would be the square root of c squared minus v squared. And so they set up this experiment and in the horizontal path, so going this way, they were measuring the time in the horizontal direction and that would be uh, d divided by c squared plus v squared because uh, the Earth is moving this direction, light was also coming to the right, and so the two of them add together, so we get C plus V. And uh, where this comes from is if you remember, uh, velocity is just your change in X, or in this case we're talking about D, so change in D divided by T, and so you just rearrange that, um, bring T over to the left, divide velocity on both sides, T is D, divided by v. So, but they thought that velocity in this case would be cumulative, so it would add up the downward direction, light going this way and earth going to the right. And then uh, it would bounce off the mirror and it would head back. So then we'd be in the upwind um, case. So earth's moving to the right, but light is now going backwards, opposing the earth, and the velocity should change. And so the time is d divided by c minus v. And then obviously um, it's equal to just 2d divided by c squared minus v squared. And this, uh, just to factor it out, so factor out 2d is 1 minus v squared over c squared to the negative 1. So in the vertical direction, the velocity in the vertical or the perpendicular direction Remember, Earth's moving to the right. Well, in the vertical direction, we have 2d, because we're traveling 
up and back, and this is the same distance here as this distance here. So 2D divided by the perpendicular um, square root of c squared minus v squared. And again, we factor out d, so it's just 1 minus v squared over c squared to the negative 1 half, which is 1 over square root. Um, and then they looked at the time difference, so the change in time was uh, the time horizontal minus the time vertical. And this is why we factored out the 2d over c, because it makes this equation a lot easier. So 2d over c, and then we just have this minus this. And that should have given the time difference. And the, and then the, uh, the interference pattern, uh, the shift in that interference pattern is just the, the path difference divided by the wavelength of light. So that's lambda. Uh, it's just the wavelength of light is what it represents. And that should have given the fringe shift. And by fringe shift, shift what I mean is you have these dark spots and light spots here. Um, so say that's a light spot, this is a dark spot in here. And when the two light beams come back, they create these fringes of light and dark, light, dark, light, dark. And it's a very good measuring tool. And so in this race of light, if they'd come back at a slightly different time, then this fringe would change. They'd be able to detect that. But, of course, uh, nobody now believes in the ether, that's silly, but at the time that was, that was, an, honest, uh, was an honest idea, which everybody, most people, uh, believe to be true. And so, it wasn't silly back then. That was where a lot of the, the research was going towards, was to prove that. But, this experiment came back false, and it had to totally rechange our ideas uh, of physics. And our understanding and that opened up the pathway to Albert Einstein in 1905 when he published the special theory of relativity to show that actually the speed of light is the same in a vacuum in all inertial reference frames regardless of your velocity and so it's, it's not very intuitive and it's pretty mind-blowing once you get your head around it but two other important things that came from relativity our time dilation with uh, relativistic velocity and length contraction. So actually, the faster you go, the uh, your length contracts along the direction that you're traveling. So say you're traveling to the right, then your length will contract along your direction of travel. So if you were this length, uh, you're going really fast. Now suddenly, your length contracts in your direction of travel and additionally uh, time dilates, but that's for another video. Okay, thank you, have an excellent day.